and it's made a difference. Uh, tools that you need to do a soil sample, depending on the soil and the depth to which the sample will be collected. Right here is a probe. Here's a couple of probes that you can plunge into the ground and you can take out a little, a little, cor a little core, or you can just use, use the space. Now, if you are working with black gumbo soil like you got here, and you're using that spade, when you go down and, 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 and you stick that, that spade in the ground, that dirt's going to stick to that spade. So before you put that shovel in the ground, spray it with Pam. Clean, clean, that, clean that spade off and spray it with Pam. Because when you do, that, that clot of dirt's going to slide off. And, and then put it in a clean, clean plastic bucket. See how they're doing it? Put it all in a bucket and then, then you mix that all together and you take one common sample from that Go over here to Greg and then get a bag and put that in there and, and, and put your name and address on it, send it off. What do they charge now? Eight, twelve dollars for it? About eight bucks. About eight bucks. And it takes probably two months to get it back and then it'll give you that nice computer printout. It'll even show you trace elements of molybdenum, of silk, yada yada yada, all them, all them different trace elements. Uh, okay, that, there's, that's what your report is going to look like. And uh, you can just read it, it shows you nitrogen, phosphorus, potash, calcium, all these copper, magnesium, all these trace borons. It, it'll show you what you need. And, and, and commercially, you can buy something called a Fritz packet. What is that, Greg? You know Fritz packet? It's, it's a packet that has all of these trace elements in it if you need them. Warm season vegetables. We're going into the warm season vegetables time of the year and uh, right now you should be, although I am not, you should be starting to think about tilling up your garden, but if you do have broccoli, how many of you have broccoli in your garden? Okay. If you have broccoli in your garden, always leave one or two plants to bloom because that is one of the first blooming flowers that you have and it is a great bee attractor. It'll attract bees. Season vegetable program. Uh, this is the nightshade family. How many of you ever pulled a potato stalk out and threw it, thrown it over the fence and watched the cows eat it? They won't eat it. All of those plants are the nightshade and the nightshade is a toxic plant. They won't eat pepper plants, they won't eat eggplants, they won't eat potatoes, and they won't eat tomatillos. They are a toxic plant. And they're called, the nightshade is a, is a, is a family of plants that are, that are toxic. So we're going to plant tomatoes, peppers, eggplant. I don't know what to do with an eggplant after I raise one. Yeah. My mama used to take them, peel them, and slice them, and boil them, and squeeze them, and break an egg, and put some crackers in it and make a, a casserole out of it or a dressing out of it, I didn't like it. But anyway, uh, tomatoes, that is my grandson. He loves tomatoes. No, let me back up. He loves fruit. And we told him to try that. Well, he tried it. <laughs> he didn't like it. So, that's my deer hunting grandson. He's the only one deer hunting with me. Recipe for a successful tomato production. Well, first of all, how many of you go into the nursery and feed store and the only, only tomato plants you saw were about this long? They'll work, but when you plant a tomato, you never want to leave over two or three inches out of ground. If you buy the big tall ones, trench them, dig your trench, lay the tomato in and cover it up, cover it up and in two days time that tomato is going to, going to turn upwards towards the sun and it'll root all along that stem. So if you, if you, if you run into a situation where you can't find nice healthy plants, but y'all get a certain time you, you get them little boxes of six of celebrity and all of them, right? If, if you can't find any and you have to do that, uh, just trench it. But large plant, large vigorous plant, I don't agree with the large part. You know, if, if my tomato plant is about this big, that's perfect for me. Because that, that, that tomato plant will grow and catch up with one that you plant that's this big. Incorporate one-fourth to one-half cup of complete slow-release fertilizer at the planting time. 
what I do when I plant, I take me some 2100 and I go down in the garden and then I till it. And then I plant on top of that. That's the way I grow it. Wrap, wrap tomato cages with a row cover. Apply a weekly foliar spray of water soluble fertilizer with micronutrients. Now I'm going to back up here talking about this liquid seaweed. Don't knock it. Liquid seaweed is a good foliar uh, fertilizer. But, but you mix a tablespoon to a gallon, or maybe two, I don't know yet, and, and put it in a sprinkling can, and, and, and just sprinkle it with a sprinkling. It, it, does, it does a good job on, 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 all, on all plants. And then you apply a weekly foliar spray of water soluble fertilizer with micronutrients, and then you work in two to three pounds of pie nitrogen fertilizer when you, when your first cluster of fruit sets. Now, as a kid, we raised tomatoes commercially for the market. One thing that you gotta remember about tomatoes, the tomato plant as it grows, it's gonna start getting suckers between the main stem and the leaves. If you will look at your tomato plant closely, you will notice that the, 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 sh the shoot, the sucker, directly beneath the first cluster, the first set of blooms, that sucker directly below will always be bigger and more healthier than the rest of them. So what you do is on your tomato plant, you go ahead and you start going down to the bottom in between the main stem and you pinch out them, them suckers. But you leave that one directly beneath the first cluster of blooms. That's a, it's a much hardier sucker and that gives you more plant. Now, you can leave all them suckers what's going to happen? You're going to get a lot of bush and not many tomatoes because your nutrient is going into producing foliage and not producing tomatoes. So what you want to do is produce tomatoes and not foliage. So you need to, you need to suck them. Plant large, vigorous plants and incorporate yada, yada, yada. All right, uh, wrap tomato. I don't think down here on the Gulf Coast we need to do that. I put cages and I got cages made out of little you know concrete wire that, that rolled stuff. I've got big baskets that are probably 25 years old. They're about this tall. I put them baskets around them and I put me a steel post on either end. And believe it or not I still got some hemp, hemp baling twine. I run me a string of baling twine and I go around each basket and I tie each basket to keep them from blowing over. I have never done that. You can if you've got a lot of wind problem, if you got a lot of insect problem if you're in danger of frost, but I don't plant till after frost. And, uh, and if I get a freeze, then I get a crop failure. I've been praying for it. Uh, work in two to three tablespoons of pine nitrogen fertilizer when your first cluster of fruit begins. But because I fertilize when I plant, I don't have to do that. I, I, I might side dress them when they get about 12 to 15 inches. I might side dress them with, like I said, a, a tablespoon of, of, of 21 oh, oh, I use a lot, a lot of nitrogen. A lot of your 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 nightshade plants are, are nitrogen uh, dependent. A lot of them need nitrogen. Peppers especially. Peppers need a lot of nitrogen. Uh, growing, growing potatoes. <clears throat> How many of you still raise potatoes? You still raise. What variety do you plant? What variety do you plant? Uh, whatever they Brand. come up with here. Do you, uh, plant? There's three varieties. There's, 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 there's a Pontiac, uh, the Lasada, and the Kennebec. Which one do you get? <laughs> whatever, whatever he gets. Whatever he gets. Oh, you can. Probably y'all get the red one because the Kennebec does not do good black salt, but the Kennebec is a nice white potato. I had some one year when I had a place out at we said and it was sand. And I planted that thing and I got the bright rain on it. I'll never forget this. It was the night of my daughter's eighth grade graduation, and I had the audacity to make her go out there and help me dig potatoes that day. And she ain't never forgiven me for that. But we made potatoes, them white cannabis were like this. I made a bunch of them. It's a nice potato, but any one of the three are good. They'll, they'll do good. If you get Pontiac or Lasada or the red ones that you get, any one of those will do good. And again, you, you, you need 
need to plant them, but because because the <clears throat> potato you get is going to be big, you're going to have to cut it. But you want to be sure that each piece from a tomato, potato is big, you can probably get four, and you want an eye on each piece. Now, when you plant them, try to make it so the eye is pointed up. Why is that? Because if the eye is pointed down, it's going to have to come all the way around. It takes it longer to come up. It takes it longer to come to the right. So, See that knife? He's cutting up potatoes into pieces, and, and that's what they look like when they start farming at the base of the root. And that looks like a probably a red Pontiac or Lasada, one of the two. I don't know what that is. But anyway, uh, growing potatoes is nice. You plant them Washington's birthday, usually around middle of February. Middle of February, yeah. And, and, and because the ground is still cool, it takes them a while to come up. Now, as kids, we would always save the little ones for fall planting. But planting fall potatoes is a crapshoot because you got to get them in the ground early. If you get a heavy rain on them, you water them too much, and you get 98 degree. What's going to happen to that potato? It's going to fade, and and so it's it's a real crapshoot planting fall potatoes.